So I have a few disclaimers for this video. It's a whole long text, but the crux of it is that this video is sponsored so don't trust a word I say, and also, don't start a cult. It ranks pretty high up on the list of bad ideas, up there with invading Russia during the winter and buying discount cold slaw. Nonetheless, it's interesting to look at cults from an academic perspective because they are one of the few real instances where real mind control is really used in real life. Nobody wakes up and says, hey, I'm gonna go join a cult. That's Mia Donovan, and she's an expert on cults since she made a movie about them. Available on Netflix. Nobody in a cult will say they're in a cult. Similarly, nobody in Minnesota will admit they actually live in Canada, but that doesn't make it not true. So what is a cult? Well, most of these groups have a front as a Bible study or political or some other sort of group, but what makes a cult a cult is often that overwhelming influence the leader has over their followers. One could call it brainwashing. Now, the actual process of brainwashing is somewhat disappointingly abstract and inconcrete. There's no three-step guide to brainwashing your cult followers. The process is more of an art than a science. So here's your scientific three-step guide to brainwashing your cult followers. The first stage is break people down. You know, get them broken. So that's Rick Ross, no relation, and he's also an expert on cults. He calls this process coercive persuasion since he's an academic and doesn't have to worry about clickbaiting YouTube viewers. Say you get invited to a, a, um, a talk or a dinner by a group of people that you've never met before and suddenly you're like the center of attention and everybody's showering you with affection and praise and interest. And this is something that a lot of cults will do because that's a very irresistible thing to be at the center of somebody's attention. Making people feel special is an overwhelmingly great feeling that traps them in. Overall, in this stage, you need to, as Rick says, talk about everything negative in the world, negative in their life, uh, put a lot of pressure on them to crack and break. And then second, uh, change them. You know, once they're in that broken state, introduce your ideas. As a cult leader, you'll probably have some sort of mission for your followers, whether it be political, religious, or something else. This second stage is where you fix it in your followers' minds. And people won't necessarily accept what you say immediately because, if you're a cult leader, you're probably saying something controversial, something novel, something anti-conformist along the lines of doomsday is coming, or let's kidnap people, or hand dryers are the work of the devil, they're loud, they're slow, and you know what? You probably think that they're better for the environment, but the optimistic studies say that they're only 20% better, while some others say that they're not even greener at all. Did you know that hand dryers actually increase the bacteria on your hands by 117%? You're better off not washing your hands at all. Hand dryers kill. That was just an example. The reason brainwashing works within a cult is because there is that peer pressure. Things that seem normal in the real world seem that way because everyone accepts them, while abnormal things seem normal in a cult environment because everyone within the group accepts them. And a lot of it's accomplished by environmental control, social isolation, information control. Cult leaders create a new normal by manufacturing people's worlds. And then once the person has accepted that program, then you move to the third stage, which is reinforcement. You need people to continue to believe and continue to stay in a cult once it's established. At this point, I should probably make sure I don't get in loads of trouble by inspiring dozens to start new cults. I'll reiterate, don't start a cult. It may be fun for a while, but it almost never works out, especially because there are guys like Rick Ross, still no relation, who work as deep programmers. Essentially, his job is to break people out of cults by dismantling their brainwashing. It's a pretty complicated process, but essentially he starts by convincing people that they're in a cult, explaining the harm that they're causing, and then showing them there's another way. His other job is as the cult expert for the game Far Cry 5. In the game, this guy named Joseph Seed starts a cult, recruits a bunch of people, takes over a big part of Montana, kills a bunch of people, yada yada yada, but the good news is that the game is actually factually accurate because Rick Ross said so. I was able to play an early copy of the game, and even though I'm by no means a gamer, it was a ton of fun because the story and premise was just so good. If you're interested at all in how this sounds, go watch the trailer. It's amazing. And you can also pre-order at the link in the description before the game comes out on March 27th, 2018.